what the largest aerospace and events capital raised globally in 2021. I'm interested in what you hope to accelerate through the money. Yeah, the first and foremost that we are trying to accelerate is our Dream Chaser space plane. So this is, uh, happen to have a, a little model of that right here. So it looks like a miniature version of the space shuttle. It is due to launch at the end of next year from the Kennedy Space Center. So we are trying to keep that on track for that launch window that would uh, begin at the end of November next year and end at the end of February 23. So we really wanna hit that. In addition, we're trying to accelerate our ability to build space destinations, which would include an inflatable habitat that would go to a low earth orbit and be available for the time when the International Space Station reaches the end of its normal life. So we want to have that checked out and operational before the end of the life of the International Space Station. And that is what we are in partnership with Blue Origin for. I mean, this is real validation to the credibility of business because I look at the investors, General Atlantic, Co2, more strategic ventures, but also BlackRock private equity as well. So household names, what do they see in your business? What is that? What are the vision of space that you're painting to them? Is it somewhere that we go and move and live or is it more, uh, more learning and, and mining? What is it that you paint? A little bit of everything you just said. So we want to enable uh, more and more businesses to go to the to the area of low Earth orbit, which is about 200 to 250 miles up. One of the main advantages that we provide in that altitude is the ability to do things in microgravities, where you feel the lack of gravity, even though you're in free fall the entire time. You're able to manufacture uh, materials with fewer de defects. You're able to do. Um, medical research much better in microgravity than we can here on the earth. Uh, we can uh, print 3D um, tissues that um, can potentially grow into organs so that we could print organs for people that um, so that they wouldn't have to wait for donors to donate their organs to people when they are in most in need. Uh, there's just a limitless number of opportunities up there. Uh, and we probably don't know the one that is going to be the big um, result of all this work. We probably don't even know what that is yet because most of our research ends up in things that um, we don't even anticipate. Mm -hmm. And those are sometimes the biggest uh, producers of monetary and uh, beneficial gain all the way around. John, and of course, you worked with NASA. You're an astronaut. What was it? 33 days in space. On the, I understand you're in the Astronaut Hall of Fame. I, Absolutely amazing. Talk to us a little bit about some of the other companies that we might know that are already working in partnership with you as well. We mentioned Blue Origin, but I understand you're working with Boeing and the like. We're working with Boeing as well, and I, I did work at Boeing in a former life before I ever went to NASA uh, in the aerospace field. Um, we are also working with Redwire. We're working with uh, several other companies that will enable us to put the whole the whole project together. So we want everything from launch capability, which Blue Origin can provide with the new Glenn rocket. We provide the Dream Chaser space plane, which can take both people and cargo to the space station, our new space station, and return cargo and crew. We can return cargo back to a runway and crew back to a runway so that they won't be coming down in the ocean or on land under parachutes. They will land like the space shuttle used to land, um, which we think is a real advantage. Um, and then we have people who have experience with working a space station, um, like Boeing, who is yeah. currently operating the ISS, as well as people who have done 3D printing and other technologies in space.